All right, so are you guys ready for the word tonight? Yes. Me too. Get ready to get kicked. Oh, it's going to hurt so good. Um, but really it's not because, because the word of God is so, so, so good. And it's really not a kick. It's more of um, kicking the devil out. How many of you know, sometimes you might feel like you got kicked, but really, um, sometimes the enemy's got such a hold on us that we really, we've kind of just, we're, we're, we're kind of partnered with him more than we're partnered with the Lord. You know, how many know what I'm talking about? Like, to the to legitimacy where, where even when the word of the Lord comes to us, it can feel like I, I can become offended because of who's in my house. And so I got this, the, the, tonight, the, here's the title of this, uh, tonight's message. It's actually part two of fighting to be the together. So in this house, we what? We fight to be together. And we've been talking about this, and we've been <clears throat> really, um, uh, just, all, uh, just for, all, for a while, we've been talking about, uh, my, my wife and, and, and myself, we've been talking about just trying to put our finger on just really the, the word or, you know, just getting light to, to, to just that smell. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you're walking through the front hall closet, front, by the front hall closet in our house. We have a front hall closet and occasionally there is a smell in that closet. But you don't know what that smell is. And so you walk by and you're like, God, I smell something. So, and you're in the kitchen, you smell something dead. So you're opening the trash can, you, you're in the pantry, there's not a rotten potato, and you come through here, you come through there, so on and so forth. And then finally, you realize that you're walking by because the door got wafted open or whew, something's in there. And you couldn't put your finger on it, but all of a sudden, here you are putting your finger on it, and it's that dead bird in that winter coat pocket that is finally <laughs> melted. And you're like, aha! Eureka, right? Uh, and so you find it. And you know, so at the, this, these are things that really happen in our house. Um, these are not, there's not jokes. They're, same with dart stories and all that. This is all real. Or when I came home last night, there was a possum uh, laying right there, right outside, like, Dad, look what I got. We brought you home. You know how cats bring things home? I got a Caleb. <laughs> so anyway, it's a true story. So I do, I have a Caleb. And I love it. It makes it makes life fun, and you just never know what you're gonna get, right? Um, all right. And so, but we're really, really just praying into just kind of like maybe a um, just what is it, what is the what is what's going on, and almost like this. How many of you know um, when you are at war, you you endeavor to find out the enemy's strategy. So there is a lot of things going on that are, that you're kind of got your ear, in a sense, to the communications of the enemy. And so, you know, how we used to speak in Morse code, or, and, and the enemy would try to interpret, you know, certain things, and then we ended up speaking in, you know, the tribe of, oh, I think it was, um, help me out, what was the Indian tribe? It was, uh, Cher- was it Cher- was it Cherokee? Navajo. Navajo, thank you, the Navajo. Uh, and, and, so, and they could not interpret that, Right? They could not interpret that, 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 in a sense, those communications. Well, when I was trying to put my finger on, what is, what's going on? Something's not quite right. And, and it was only just a few weeks ago, even as we've been praying, you know, uh, into what this was, that it, one night when we were throwing wood on the pile, it burns better together. That statement, it was like, oh my gosh, it's 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday night. And I get this, that's it for the last three months. And so there was just a lot of utterance that came from that. And so tonight, this is part two um, of fighting to be together, because it burns better together. How many of you know that it's important that the, that the church burn? Yes. And that there'd be a bright light, that they would be a city on a hill. How many of you know that the light is to shine brighter? And the Bible talks about how there's going to be, the, the, that there is, in, in this season, the, in other words, in the season in which we're living, there is a separation. There is a separation of light and dark um, and really hot and cold. You know, the Bible talks about, I wish you were either hot or cold, but since you're lukewarm, it's, I'm going to spew you out of your, my mouth, in other words, so that you would become cold and you would know your nakedness, so you'd know your wretchedness, and therefore you'd cry out to God. This is Revelation, right? 
And in this season, this is really where we're at. And, and I believe God wants his church to shine bright because the reason he's been patient, not slow concerning his promises, as far as the Lord's return, he says, I'm not slow. You know, you, some of you guys say you've been saying this for years, but I am coming back. But the only reason it's taken this long is I've been patient because I've been waiting for the precious fruit of the earth to come in because it's not my will that men would be lost, but it's my will that all men would be saved and come to the knowledge of him. And they're going to come to the knowledge of him when the eyes of their understanding are enlightened. You you can pray this in Ephesians, but in Ephesians 1, I think it's 118, I pray that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened and you know the hope to which you've been called. But here, if you just jump over into Ephesians, I think it's 2, 6, where he says, you too, remember in times past where you too walked, you know, with your eyes of your understanding blinded. In other words, you were blinded. So what is it that causes you and I to be able to see? It's light. And so this, the, the church needs to be walking in light like never before. And you know what I have found is um, there's a song, This Little Light of Mine. You know, this, that's not going to cut it anymore. Uh, we need to get out the light, which is, how many of you have ever seen a flashlight? I like flashlights. I really like them mostly because they help me find and recover deer at night. It's like, wow, that's a bright flashlight. But how many of you know how do they measure, at least in this modern era, how they measure the brightness of a flashlight? It has so many lumens, right? And so it's, one lumen is, is kind of just not that great, is it? But if you get a flashlight that has 2,000 lumens, you're like, hey, hey this is the good one. Or 5,000 or 10,000, th- th- there's something powerful going on when there's a togetherness. And again, w- when, when more are put together, it's brighter. And where it's brighter, darkness is expelled. Okay? So the enemy would love, we know that also that the enemy can devour, we know in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. A thief, uh, when, does a, when, does a, when does a robber or somebody get mugged? When they're what? Alone, in the dark. In the dark or what? Or alone. How many of you know, it, it, when you send your kid, maybe they're a little bit younger, and you say, go with your friends, why do you tell them to go with their friends? Because there's strength in numbers, right? Or you don't think that they can get overtaken. Yeah, why? Because when you're alone, you can be taken over. And this is where we talked about last week. Any thought that is, is, is isolative or isolates you, it, has, it, it comes from or is authored by your enemy. Any thought that causes you to be isolated is authored by your enemy. we got to understand that there is power in, in, in the words that we listen to. And not only the words that we listen to, and I say the words that we listen to, because you know what's so crazy about these thoughts, and I say these thoughts, you listen to them, because the thoughts are heard in your voice. How many of you know that's true? How many of you know your thoughts, when you read a book, or when you hear a thought, you hear that thought not in Mickey Mouse's voice, right? You don't hear it in, you know, Roger Rabbit or or whatever voice, you know, uh, uh, last night we were watching this show, um, and oh, it was a, it was a, a, a what do they call those things? The people that do things on YouTube. Anyway, it was called Deer Meat for Dinner. Is the guy? He's a YouTuber. Okay, great, great show, right? YouTube. Anyway, and they were down in uh, Guatemala, and they were singing Happy Birthday uh, to to one of their camera guys. So this is like live, you know. And there's these four Hispanic guys, and they sound like. Uh, uh, Nacho Libre, when they're at the party, it's a party, but they're singing happy birthday to you. Anyway, it's so funny. I don't know how we got onto that. Your voice. I heard Nacho Libre last night live, and it was real. It, okay? So that wasn't just something made up. It was real. Anyway, I was like, that's so cool. Anyway. All right. Thank you, Lord. So you hear, you hear in your voice. And the thing about your voice, your voice comes from you. And the thing about you is, you know you better than anybody else knows you, right? And you know how we judge ourselves? We judge ourselves by the intentions, not our, our works. So, so really, we know our heart. But do we? But do we? Because what comes out of your heart is how you know your heart. Again, this is... Fighting to be together, part two. This is a Sunday message, but this is a message really more, uh, it's, it's to the church. I, I would say to the hardcore church. Because if you want to bring down a building, you take out a pillar. 
Would you agree? I mean, you can hit the wall and put a hole in it. That's repairable. But you kick out that leg. How many of you know some things crumple? How many of you know structures are rearranged and, and sometimes you have to start over? So what you do is you go after a, a pillar. And, and, and so this message tonight is, is really a Wednesday night message. It's a Wednesday night message because I'm talking to you, the church. I'm not saying that the people on Sunday morning are not the church, but this is very much, and I would be talking to you now if you're listening on a later date, this is to you, uh, and the reason that you're listening to this is because God would consider you a pillar, or He wants to build from you. He wants to build upon you. There's great things in you, and, and there's, there's, there's a positioning. He knew you'd be here in this time, in this season, and for such a time as this, God wants to do something, and that's why the enemy's been working so hard to jack with you and get you offended. Because you don't really know your heart unless you hear what's coming out of your heart. But so many times, all we hear is what we're, the, the thoughts that we're muttering to ourselves and repeating and reading Right And narrating, we are literally reading the book that the enemy, or the chapters that the enemy is authoring. But you know what would be crazy? You know, like, let's just say this. I can't believe, let's just, let me just make a statement here. I don't, I, these, these are not like, none of, this isn't notes, this is just kind of coming up, right? But this is, so I'm going to make up a statement, I might really butcher, I might say something really bad. I don't know, it's going to come out. Um, you know, you know the thoughts that you have towards somebody else that you never say? So this is, again, this is Fighting to Be Together Part 2. Oh, oh, here's the title of this message. What you hiding there? What you hiding in there? Hey, what you hiding in there? You know our heart is kind of like a box. What you hiding in there? What you hiding in there? Hey, what you hiding in there? You know, these statements that re, 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 just reoccur and, and kind of go around and around and around and around in our, in our lives, I'm telling you, there are stories we can tell for 10 years, 15 years, 30 years that we still tell. And those stories have kept us, you know, the word, the Bible tells us that our words direct our lives like a rudder and a bit in our horse's mouth. Our words, the Bible tells us in Proverbs that we're snared or held to by the words of our mouth when we say something. That's why you, you say the words, don't just think the words. When you express your love towards your family, towards your, there's, there's something, there's staying power in, in the release of your words. And, and even how he says you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So even salvation is appropriated by the words of your mouth. Your words are, are very, very powerful. But I think sometimes we don't realize that, realize that, that the, these words that we're listening to and we're partnering with um, on the inside, they're, they're just as powerful. They're just as powerful. And I lost my train of thought about um, 30 seconds ago. I was trying to get it back. Help me out. Mm. You know... Yeah, thoughts about somebody. We can jump into that, but I, I, I actually hit a rabbit hole, and, I, and I, I lost him, and I just had to go back to the main track here. Huh? Yeah, what you hiding in there? And that's the, that's the title, what you hiding in there. And what you hiding in there, we'll just try to articulate something that you might be hiding in there. Can you believe that explicitive? Because you don't cuss out loud. Can you believe that? Jerk. Can you believe them? I can't believe that they would do that. What is their problem? Don't they know? Or do you know what I did for them? And then they go and do that. So we have this, this, this thing that, we, that we, we will read to ourselves because we know that our heart's intentions and what we've been doing and da 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 But you know what we don't do? We don't write it out. And we don't let somebody else read it. <laughs> Can you imagine if the thought in your head, you let somebody else read to you? Not, not you know, how you say it to yourself where you understand. It's because you understand yourself so well, you can raise your voice to your own self. And, no, no, no. and it all sounds very reasonable. And it not only sounds reasonable, it sounds like that's the way it is. 
And this is true. This is the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. And God told me. Maybe. Maybe if we'd write out what you just, what you just read to yourself you might, and give it to somebody else to read, they would say, you need, um, do we need to go see a counselor? Because you have lost your ever-loving mind. You've lost your ever-loving mind. And um, I, I, so I, I, want, I want to pick up here with Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Uh, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. The course of your what? Life. Not just the days, but life. Life. How you breathe. How, how are you breathing today? We're, we're breathing. But how I'm experiencing my today and my tomorrow hap- it happens to be connected to what is in my heart. So you could say this, your environment is created and maintained. Your environment is created and maintained by the words of your mouth. We see this in, in, in Genesis when God said, let us make man in our, in our image and in our likeness. And then he did, right? And so we see how God operates, and we see how Jesus operated, and he, how, he told, how he told the disciples to operate. And so what did he do? when he, What was the most powerful thing he gave the disciples? A message. Think about this. He gave them a message of good news. That's what he equipped the disciples with. A word. A word of good news. That's powerful. We don't, we don't think that. What did he, he gave him? He said, I'm giving you authority, but I'm giving you a word. I'm giving you my word, the, a message. And that word right there it has the ability to not only create, but maintain your environment. So sometimes we're just stuck in, 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 in a, a, a suck environment. A, 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 like no life, just, just, uh, just no life, just... Uh, we're just stuck there because of the words of our mouth. And if you don't want to stay there, quit going back there. Quit taking a left. Quit taking a left. Quit taking a left. I remember I was in this season uh, a number of years back where, you know, because what you, how many of you know, how many of us want to just drive our car into a wall or our life into a wall and just off of a, we don't want to just drive our life off of a cliff. We don't want to just cause destruction. Everything in our heart. So, uh, you know, we want things to go well, right? We want things to go well. And, and so you're, even your decisions you're trying to make and you're trying to do, you're, you're doing them with the best intentions. Now, what the decision that I make and, the decision, and when it involves other people, how many of you know that, that sometimes communication can get crossed? Unintentionally, but very really. Communication is the exchange of information. And sometimes there's lack of communication. Sometimes there's miscommunication. Sometimes there's no communication, right? And sometimes the enemy has completely just intercepted uh, uh, and, and replaced communication. But at the end of the day, something was heard, right? And in this season, um, uh, uh, I remember I was stuck in this place for, gosh, uh, probably eight months of just almost just wanting to quit. And um, I remember that I never talked about what I was going through with people, I, but I did with my spouse. And then sometimes I would kind of try to try to talk about it in a very, you know, non just, I'm, I'm just struggling, but you know, God's good and that, whatever way. And then I heard this. Your enemies won't believe an explanation. Your friends don't need one. So shut up. Okay. And my wife and I, we decided we're not going to talk about it even to each other ever again. We're just not, we're done. Because what's kept us in this place has been the words, not just of our mouth, but of our heart. Because your environment is created and maintained by the words of your mouth. And Proverbs 4.23 tells us, guard your heart. Because the words of your heart determine the words of your mouth. The words of your heart determine the words of your mouth. But your environment is maintained and, and, and created by the words of your mouth. But your heart 
is what creates those words. Those words that are heard and muttered over and over and over and over. So, hey, hey, what you hiding it in there? What you got in there? Hey, what you got in there? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something here in a moment. You might think is inappropriate for church because this is God's house, yet you bring it in every day. It might scare you. I hope it does. I hope it, it opens your eyes to realize what you're letting in and what you allow in, in, on your shoulder every day. You know what's so crazy? is So often, because every word has an author, so often um, the enemy's words, when he authors them, you know what his words do? They cause you to question. You know, how many of you know? The Bible tells us that God's word is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. His word is a lamp to my feet, a light into my path. And I, I've said this before, the Lord comes with a direction, the enemy always comes to question. When the, when the enemy authors a word in your li- into you and into your, into your mind, or into, and he speaks to you, or he, he tells you something about somebody that, you know, you need to know, it's going to cause you to do this. I wonder why they did that. I wonder why they never say hi to me. I wonder why they didn't thank me the way that I thought I should have been thanked. I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I'm trying to figure it out. I can't figure it out. It's causing me to wonder. You know, it might even be causing me to marvel a little bit. You know, just, can you believe that? It's just wondermas. You ever been there? You ever been there? Trying to figure it out. Trying to solve. Trying to solve for your... Trying to come up to a conclusion. But the crazy thing is on this conclusion that you're trying to muster, it's only between you two. You know, like... Like, what happened is just between us. We didn't think that there might have been another spirit in the mix. We didn't even think of that. We didn't even think of that. And we, here we're operating under, under, partnering with a different spirit, one that's not of God. We're going to look at that here in a moment. And we don't even realize it. And we're trying to solve. And I know me, and even though my statement to me, makes a whole lot of sense. And to me, it, it's rational. If I gave it to somebody else, they would say, no, that, something's wrong here. The only two people to blame here, really, is me. And you know, I'm right most of the time, right? I mean, I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much. And so if, if it's not me, because I know what I did in my heart, it's got to be you. Or your friend, right? How many of you know? And so, what? It, the, the, and these words are very much divisive. And so, and they what they do? They cause you to marvel. And it was last night. Um, I, I wasn't going to teach in in this way, but when I saw this last night, I was like, "Oh my lord, this is it! This is a, a great picture to put before you." And so, I'm going to show you. Does that you have that video? Sweet. This is a three minute trailer, so I even hate to give it three minutes. But I, I want to give it three minutes to, um, to show you a movie that's coming up. So let me just say this. It's a movie. It's going to hit our world. And this world is going to really relate to it because it's going on all the time. And we'll sit and we'll be entertained by this movie. A lot of the world will be. Many Christians will be because it's make-believe. Which is a lot of what's going on in your mind anyway. So just sit back and watch a Marvel movie that's coming to you in 2022. Hit play. Go ahead and pause it and leave that up there. Go back just to smoke, uh, just, uh, just a few seconds. All right. Sharp teeth. The line between hero and villain is going to be crossed. There's a line. Even this word, let me get to find Morbius, the, the word that they used. Sickness 
or mental illness. It's crazy how the eyes, all of these things that are going on, and how very much it's not just like mental illness, it's very much spiritual. Did you see it? This, this voice that's on the edge and that's talking to, to you and me, that's divisive, it's not just divisive, it's demonic. Every word that's isolative in nature, that took, that's talking to you about you and only you, it's this on your shoulder. And his words are sharp like this teeth. You know, Satan wants to be like Jesus. He wants to be like God. He wants to, out of his mouth, like the Bible tells us, like a sword comes out of God's mouth, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword able to divide. He wants his mouth to be sharp as well. So what does he do? He uses his words and his mouth to divide, to, sh- to, to serrate, to cut up, to belittle, to make less than. And this is what's on your shoulder. And this is what you're listening to. We're talking about fighting to be together. Hey, what's in there? Hey, y'all, what's you hiding in there? Do, do you know? Do, do you know? Like if you open it up, it's like the bats in the trailer. All kinds of little thoughts and little dark things. Hey, what you hiding? Hey, what you hiding in there? Hey, what are those thoughts that you've been thinking about, Pastor Nate? Uh, you, no, you, you, we're, we're cool. We're cool. We fist bump. Boom, 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 boom. You know? But he didn't say hi. And he thinks he's this. And blah, 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 blah. Okay. Great. Put his head on your shoulder. I know it's not the song. But this is, that's literally how we sing him to sleep. Like just, what a, we, we just a lot. And so here you, you're going, are you putting that evilness in the church? Let me just tell you that the name of Jesus and we have authority over every demonic spirit. Listen, the authority has been given to you. The question is, will you entertain it? Or will you... Speak to it. Do you, will you entertain it? We take every thought captive, the Bible tells us, to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. Okay, so now you can take that off there. Let's go ahead and put up 1 John chapter 4. And I, wanted to, I want you to see this tonight because this is, again, hey, what you hiding? We're going to fight to be together. Because the enemy's goal is to do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. we Excuse me, we're going to look at that here in a moment. But look at this. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. Okay? And he say, he's talking about voices here. Spirit, that word there is the same word, that's the, uh, the Greek word pneuma, which means breath, wind, or spirit, or that which gives life. Okay? So there is something giving life. He says, Do not believe everything or every breath or everything that gives life, because some... But try the spirits, try the breath, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. False prophets being a person that's speaking on behalf or partnered with a different breath. A breath that's not of God, a breath that is of Satan. See, God is cool like this. He says, life or death, heaven or hell, light or dark, hot or cold. We're kind of like... You know, how many colors of the color wheel? God is like, boom, 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 boom. So where you don't have to be confused. Am I following God because it looks like this or it looks like, well, I mean, this is kind of like God. No, it's either light or dark. It's either heaven or hell. It's either hot or cold. It's either of God or not of God. So he said, test the spirits. Beloved, uh, he said, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, the breasts, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Now we understand that he's talking about how there's going to be people that teach certain things. How many of you know, oftentimes, you and I are our teacher. You know, and, and, I, and I, I, I was thinking about this just actually the other day, and I repeated it a couple of times today. Um, in conversations, but so many times we, how many of you know, uh, and, and I know this, I know you can learn. I know you can learn, but can you be taught? 
Because oftentimes you're the teacher. I know you can learn, and you're going to teach yourself, and you're going to make it, and all that kind of stuff. But I know you can learn, but can you be taught? In other words, can, can somebody teach you? Or do you know? Because that right there, how do you know if you're teachable? Anybody know? Oh, because you ask questions. That's how. You go ask questions. So if your brother offends you, right, and something's going on, what do you do? You go to him. Hey, man, this is what happened. And I just, you go to them and you ask them a question. Or are you going to self-solve or solve with the little guy on your shoulder? And I hope you remember that picture the next time you take a thought that doesn't, didn't come through the gate of Jesus. The, the, in other words, it didn't come under the lordship of Jesus Christ. In other words, God didn't author that. Listen, I, oh my goodness, this is so good. I'm not asking you what you know, church. And I'm not talking to you like, huh? I'm talking to you, the body. I'm not asking you what you know. I'm asking you what you've let go. Not what you know. What you let go. What, what does it mean to let go? Not have a hold of anymore. Let me read to you First John again. First John 4, and we're going to jump from there to another spot and, and back. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. But this you know, the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, or you know, opposite. Antichrist, opposite God which you've heard and was coming and now is already in the world. Little children, you are from God and, and have overcome them. Overcome them being the people? No, not so much the people as the voices, okay? The spirits. The author of those spirits, okay? And he says, for he who is in you, who lives in you, is greater than he who's in the world. And again, he's talking about who lives on the inside of you. He's talking to, the, to this church. He's talking to the, to the church, which in you, the spirit of God dwells. And so he's talking about spirit against spirit. And he says, any spirit, any breath that does not confess Jesus having come in the flesh, or let me say it this way, Jesus as Lord, or that Jesus was God come in the flesh, and therefore, everything that we've said right now, everything that we've talked about has authority because it's come from him. We don't preach ourselves, Paul said in, in Corinthians. We don't preach ourselves. We, we preach him in Christ crucified and nothing else. So he's preaching from a place of authority. And anything that does not uh, come underneath the, the fact that Jesus is Lord, or Jesus is Lord meaning the master, the master of all, God come in flesh, right? Then, then he says anyone that doesn't believe that anything that doesn't come underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ, that's not from God. Really simple. Okay, let's keep on going here in, in verse 5. It says, they are, of the world, they are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever, listen, whoever knows God listens to us, and whoever is not from God does not listen to us. But we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay, so let me just talk to you again. Um, what you hiding in there? What, what, what's going on in there? Uh, Maybe say maybe even it's not what you hiding in there. Who you hiding in there? Who? Is it that guy? Sometimes we need to put a face with the author. You ever seen the radio voice? Like you ever see the guy that talks on the radio and you're like, that is not who I pictured. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like there's this farmer guy that we've driven by every day, and on Sunday this trailer came off of, of a vehicle in front of us and, and just rolled through the barbed wire fence and through the pasture, and we were just at the right place at the right time. And my kids, we got this tractor, or trailer and put it back on this lady's trailer, and I had all this stuff from doing deer fences, and I said, I'll be right back. And here comes the farmer in his overalls, you know? And I'm like, he's an older gentleman, and, uh, and so he's like, well, thank you guys for, for do, you know, helping me out here. And when he started talking... Did not expect it. The sound of the voice matching the body or the outfit at all. 
And so much so that when we got in the car, uh, my boys were like, did you, I did not think that's what he was going to sound like. <laughs> that's what my kid said. It was kind of like a high squeaky boy. Well, hey, thank you. All. And, you know, like it was so cute. So, uh, you know, I'm just glad nobody got hurt, but, it, but I can't even talk. Like it was just so different. Like squeaky or just, he was sweet. He was just so sweet, you know? It wasn't like the farmer voice. All I'm saying is, so many times our imagination of the voice we're listening to has a different face than it actually is there. That's why I wanted to show you the face. Because we entertain things, we listen to things, and we put a picture of who's talking. But who's talking is not what you think. And all of a sudden we pull back the cup. What you hiding in there? Oh, wait, who you hiding in there? Oh, him. Oh, okay. I know, I know. How many of you know what he would say? What he would say? I don't want to hear that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you know you don't want to hear him say, now I lay you down to sleep. I pray the Lord... Thy soul to keep. If I should die. It's true. John 10, 6 through 10. Jesus spoke to them saying, using this illustration. Again, John 10, verse 6 through 10. But they did not understand what he was telling them. So again, he tells them, truly, truly, I tell you. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. I am the gate. Any, any word that you're listening to that does not come through the gate or come underneath the lordship of Jesus Christ or what Jesus would say, yeah, I know, no, 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 but. Yeah, I know, but I just like the guy on my shoulder. Well, I don't like that guy on my shoulder. Well, that's who it is. We're fighting to be together. We're fighting to be together. Anyone that does not come through the gate, I am the gate. If anyone enters through me, he'll be saved. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me say it this way, where we just read in 1 John 4. There are words that are coming from God, from Jesus, a spirit authored, a voice, a breath, coming to you that's authored by Jesus himself, and through that gate, there is life. Yeah, but I don't want to receive that word. That's what he says. He says, if I'm the gate. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. He will come in and out and find pasture. Have you been dry? Has it been a little arid in your life? Have you not been harvesting what you desire? You might not have the pasture that you're looking for because of the seeds. Listen, seeds, not that just have been, not that have been planted, but that you have allowed to be taken. I'm not asking you what you know. I'm asking you, what have you let go? Let's go to 1 John, or not 1 John, let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 15. And I want you to see this because so many times we read the parable of Mark chapter 4, and these are the seeds sown on the wayside, and blah, 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 right? And we can, rec- we can repeat it, and we can say, and these are those that were sown among stony ground, and these are those that are among thorny ground, and these are those that are good ground. But are we missing something? Because these are the kind that are so... I think sometimes we read right over Mark 15, which is the explanation of the wayside, and we think, well, that's just those that have the hard heart that don't want nothing to do with the Word there, Pastor. Really? Let's read it. And these are those that are by the wayside. Hmm. But, but, but they're in proximity of the Word. They might just be sitting in your chair tonight. I'm being a smart tale because you know what? Sometimes someone needs to talk you off the ledge. Sometimes you need to hear this. Maybe, maybe in the years to come, I'll need to hear this myself. Hello, McFly. 
And these are those that are by the wayside. Knock, knock, knock. These are those that by, they hear the word, or the, the, by the way I said, where the word is sown. Okay? In other words, somebody sows the word. The word of God. The word of God is heard. Okay? Someone planted. But, and I, you know the thing about planting? Nobody just goes out and does this. At least a good farmer. A, a good pastor. Somebody, you know what they do? They, they, they endeavor to hear what the Lord would want to say that day. And right there that day is the word for you that would produce in you exactly as God designed it to. Amazing. So they've sown it. So to sow, how many of you know, if you're going to go plant a garden, you get the tool, you get the this, you hook up the, the plow, you hook up the, 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 the disc, you hook up the fertilizer spreader, you hook up, you get your seed, you, get the, you wait for the rain to fall. You, all of these things. In order to sow, there's a little bit more than just, oh, he sowed. Yeah. No. The word was sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes a word... This is, you might underline this circle this in, in your Bible. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown where? Oh, oh, what just wasn't sin on top? You mean, you mean you heard it? You mean you heard it, you had it, and you let him take it? That's exactly what I mean. I mean, I, I'm telling you, it went in. And it didn't just go in one ear and out the other. It went in, and you pondered it. And Satan, now let's, why, don't we, why don't we just define Satan for a second? Because so many times we read Satan, we read the devil, we read, and these words are very descriptive of what his, they, they identify him. Right? So let's, let's just define for a moment, let's define, uh, let's define Satan. Here it is, the thief. <laughs> the accuser, Satan. Isn't that interesting? The thief and the accuser are Satan, your, your enemy. He is a thief and he's an accuser. I, I think that's interesting that so many times it's the accusation of others that allows him to take the word. Hey, God just doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to know good and evil. God doesn't want you. He just painted God in a bad light. Did, you, did anybody see that? Mm-hmm. And then what did he do? Snatch. Snatched it right out. Snatched. Snatched. Yeah, I know about this. I know about love. I know about the word. I know, I know, I know. But, but you don't know. Accuse, accuse, accuse. Of the brethren. Oh, so the accuser of the brethren, you mean Satan's job doesn't, isn't just to accuse me? Like, I'm not the only brethren? No. The body is. Listen, there's, there's sisters that are... There's friends. Oh, but we're good. <laughs> we're just going to let them work a little longer and build a little bigger web until that pillar is wrapped up. We get that chain around it the three times. Make sure you put that thing over the top so it doesn't slip off the T-post. You know what I'm saying? You know how you teach them until we get it to where it's not going to slip because I got it tied right. And now when I yank, it's coming out. He is, how many of you know, he waits for an opportune time. Yeah. You know what the, his most opportune time is when the case has been built. Yeah. Usually a case isn't built with just one word. It's a word that was said, I don't know, 40 different ways. And usually it's just one word. But you just make sure that, that whoever is going to make the call has heard that word from this side. From this side, from this side, from this side, and that word is guilty. Guilty, 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 they, they, they. And you are deserving. 
of the full retribution and the full sediment that you deserve. Which you don't even know what that is, but you just want them to pay. But you don't even know that that's going to make it right. You don't, you, the, the crazy thing is, is this story that you've entered in, it's a dark story. And in that story, there is no light. And both people are going to be destroyed. Because, let's go back to John chapter 10. Where are we at? He says, I am the gate. If anyone answers me, he will be saved. And he will come in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. It's interesting that that's all in that passage. That just in that passage when he says that I'm the gate. If, if someone comes in through the gate, listen, any life, any spirit, any breath, that, hey, if it doesn't come in the gate and it comes in a different gate that doesn't come under the gate of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it's, a, it's come to steal, kill, and destroy. And, it, and it's going to do it in any which way it possibly can. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 4. Let's jump in uh, and let's pick up in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Let me say this. Does he say that if you're not walking in love, you don't know the Lord and that you're not saved? Is that what that's saying? No. It means to know someone, to fellowship with them, to be into... When, let me say it this way. When was the last time you knew your wife? Well, I know my wife. No, when was the last time you knew your wife? It's a difference, right? This is what this is saying. Anyone, they, they know the Lord. In other words, they've been, they've been intimate with him. They've been exchanging hearts. Again, knowing your wife is just not the sack. <laughs> but it does include that. Come on, guys. Trying to help you out. But it's true. It, it, it's, it's not just one or the other. It is an intimate heart exchange. It's an opening up of, to one another. And you know what? So many times what we don't do is we don't open up even those things to the Lord. We just try to solve them on our own. And God wants, to, God wants us to open up the cares in our heart to Him. And know him. And we talked about this just two weeks prior. Right before, we talked about fighting for one another. We talked about in this house, we pray. What is pray? It's we exchange the, our heart's desire. Lord, and you know what he'll do? Because I open up and I come to him and I say, God, look at this. And he'll say, come over to this side, buddy. Oh, I see that. Thank you. Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. I repent. Because of what? Knowing, fellowshipping, experiencing, encountering the Lord. Fighting for fellowship. Fighting to be together. We got to fight to be together. As you see the day approaching, fight all the more to come together. To come together. To come together. To come together. How do I know when I'm together? When there's an exchange. What's the exchange? Is the exchange only, you know, while you got something else in there? Don't allow a word that is not authored or hasn't come through the gate or under the Lordship of Jesus Christ don't, don't come under that word and entertain that word. Instead, recognize and put the face with the author. And I guarantee what you'll do, you won't sit under and entertain him. You'll begin to take authority over him and say, no, in, in Jesus' name. So many times we think that time is going to heal something. Many times, most of the time, whenever there is a, a rift or, or, or uh, a, a division, 
It is repentance and to change your mind. That's what repentance means, to change your mind. That is the way back. Change your mind. Well, I just, you just don't know what they did. <laughs> you just might not know who's on your shoulder, honey. And who you're sleeping with every night. Oh, by the way, if they're in, on your shoulder and they're in your house, or if they're on your shoulder, they're in your house. And just maybe you might just fall asleep and they might just run right over and talk to your children for a little while. Oh, don't be scared. This is what you want. Because you just don't know what they did. No, the way back and the way to get him out is to take authority over him. And the only way I can take authority over him is if I bring that thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. And so that means I'm going to have to come under I'm going to come under Jesus' word. And when I come under Jesus' word, then I can take authority over him. Peter I know. Paul I know. But who are you? Peter is under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Paul is under the lordship of Jesus Christ. And so demons tremble at the name of Jesus and at the name of Paul because those two are ones under authority. But who are you? You're going to try to exercise authority over things that are rocking your world, but you're not going to come under God's word. You're entertaining a spirit. You got them on your shoulder. You're leaving them in your house. But let me say it this way. You're leaving them in my house. You're leaving them in my house. This is my house. This is my church. And that's exactly how the devil wants you to, how God would want you to hear it, that it is his house, it's his church, and you better get him off your shoulder. I hope, I hope to God that you as a mom and a dad, if that walked in your house and tried to latch a hold of your children, that you would do something. I hope to God you would. And you know what? That's what God is looking for. He's looking for a shepherd that would say, stand in the gate. Stand in the gate and tell them no. Not in this house. Not in this house. I got a thing on the back. It says, it says, we deal with strife. This is a house of, of saved words. Let me, let, me, let me read it. I'm going to walk back here. Cameras, whatnot. Let me read it. This is important. No trash talk. No trash talk. We know that life and death are in the power of what? Tongue. The tongue. We are strife free and will aggressively defend our unity. We say only good things about others and give no place to what? The enemy. The enemy. The enemy. The enemy's in the house, guys. Do you like it? Do you like the enemy in the house? I sure don't. Give no place. You know one of the things that we talk about? We deal gently with people, but we deal aggressively with the Spirit. We deal gently. We, this is the truth. We deal gently with people, but we deal aggressively with the Spirit. And there is a spirit, there is a breath, there is a life behind a word that's bringing you to isolate, there, to, 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 to separate in some way. There's a breath behind that. Because see, no body, no, no body part was ever created for itself. No body part was ever created for itself. And so therefore, no body part can find fulfillment alone. You want your days to be hopeless, helpless? Then go ahead and just entertain that voice of being alone. Or that causes somebody else to be less than. Let me say it this way. Cuts them down. Like a sharp knife, like those teeth. I want you got to hear it. That those words, they're not just innocent. 
they're authored. They're not just innocent, they're authored. And the story that the author is telling, he's got an end goal in mind. And this offense, that's a wall that you can't get over, well, it just might corral you down, just like this fence, can't get over the fence, so I just follow the fence. And so the fence corrals you to a destination that's not for your good. So I'm telling you this, and I'm very passionate about this, because we have to fight. You want to fight? Who wants to fight? Let's fight. I'm a fighter and a lover. I'm a fighter. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to be passionate about what, what I believe. I'm not going to just play church. It's not make-believe. This is, this is very real. And the things that you're wrestling with, they're not just what you see. There's demonic things behind them. If you were to go watch that again, you might just get some goosebumps like, ooh. Why? Because you, you understand that what you're watching is not just make-believe. To some extent. To some extent. Let me finish going on here and then I'm going to close because I'm already over. Um, love one another for your love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God. Fellowship, again, not to not under. Because God is love. In this love is the love of God. I'm going to read all the way to the end of this chapter and we're closing. In this, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world that we might live or experience life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. He was patient with us. He was kind with us. He believed the best of us. He didn't count us suffered wrong. He didn't rejoice in your suffering. He loved us. And said his, sent his son and said, I want to pay for them. I want to pay for their sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. I'll throw this in there, faith works by love. Some of the things that need to be released in our lives, they're promises that we hold, but the activation is love and there's been a hold up and there's been a linchpin that just has to come loose and it's that linchpin of love. We've got to release, not because we don't know, but because of we, what we've let go. We've let go of some things that we've got to get back and there's an operation in our heart and our view towards other people, those that are in the house and those that are out of the house, those that deserve God's love just like you and I. Oh, wait, we weren't that deserving? Wow. Wow. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to all to love one another. No one ever has seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him. If I abide in him, John 15, I, there's fruit. And he is in us because he has given us his what? His spirit. We'll read 13 again. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us. How do I know if I'm abiding? How do I know if I know him or if I'm fellowshipping with him? If, if what I am listening to is the Spirit in me, Him. What, what, whose voice am I? Test the Spirit. Did it come through the gate? Is this what Jesus says? You know, sometimes we say, what would Jesus do? Remember the WWJD? What would Jesus say? What would Jesus say? You know what it takes for you to find out what Jesus says? Because here at one time he says something this way and another time he says something this way. It takes you inquiring of the Lord. 
It takes you asking. It takes an exchange. Lord, what about this? My heart's hurt. This happened. It feels real. And you exchange. You know what he'll do? He'll breathe. He'll, he'll use his breath. His spirit will speak to you. And you'll see what he says. And it'll bring understanding. You know, it's amazing. God can sell us some amazing, some really hard truths and we can swallow them. Nobody else could tell us, but God can. Because, because he has given us his spirit, verse 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love, in love abides in God. And God abides in him. Sometimes you just need God in the situation. Amen? By this love, by this is love perfected with us. So, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Let's be authentic when we come in here. When you express your love, you know, the Bible tells us that if you have offense or something going on with your brother, before you bring your gift to the altar, leave it there. And while you stand praying, forgive. So that tells me it doesn't have to take a year to forgive. It only takes as long as it takes to stand there. You can only stand so long, even if you're stubborn. And while you stand praying, forgive. This is Mark 11. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he, ha he has seen, cannot love God, who he has not seen. And this commandment we have for him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. I'm going to close with these two, these two scriptures. They are the same. I'm only going to read one of them. They're the exact same. Isaiah 35, 10 and Isaiah 51, 11. And the ransom, the ransomed of the Lord, those who have been bought from the Lord, will return and come with joyful shouting to Zion with everlasting joy upon their heads. They will find gladness and joy and sorrow and sighing will do what? Flee away. The enemy would like you weak. <sighs> tired. Why are you tired? Because the one that God's joined you to you're alone and you're not drawing from the way you're supposed to. <sighs> you're tired. And there's heaviness and there's sorrow and you've been thinking about it and you just want it to be right but you just don't know how to make it right. And, and, or, and you know, it just causes you to marvel because you've been entertaining a word and this word has been entertained and entertained. But he says this, and this is, I, I really believe, the answer to, um, the answer to fight, this and again, part two, of in this house, we fight to be together. We fight, you and I fight, and it's so simple. We fight the enemy through repentance. When you and I see what God's done and what God has said, and we simply come under him, you know, because God, God loved the world, and you weren't deserving but you, in order to receive Christ, you had to come under what he says, and that is this, I'll pay for that. I'll pay for that. When you come under that, what happens is you're ransomed. When you receive that, when you come and you repent, and you, and you give your heart to the Lord, you say, I'm coming under, I'm turning from my, from my way to your way. What happens is, is you're ransomed. And the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And, and the ransomed of the Lord will return and come with joyful shouting unto the, the house or the city of God. I love that. That's, that's what Zion means, city of God. 
with everlasting joy upon their heads. My face. <laughs> Man, there's something about joy in someone's eyes. And just hearing what God says, because I've been ransomed, because I've been redeemed, I'm in fellowship with him. And there's just something about being able to come to the city, to the house of God. I'm just so thankful. And he says this, they will find gladness and joy and, and, and sorrow and sighing, the tiredness and the heaviness, he said, will flee. I love, I love that. It, it, the Bible t- tells us that the enemy will flee. You resist the enemy and he'll do what? He'll run. How do you resist him? Well, you don't come under your own way or the way of another spirit, any spirit. Let me say it like this. There's only two. There's God, what God says or what the devil says. And any spirit that's not in line with what God says, whether it sounds good to you and in your mind and it makes sense and it, it based on your experience, if it's not what God says, it's authored by Satan himself. Put the picture with the author. It'll cause you and I to fight. And you and I can say, you know what? I'm going to repent. I'm going to choose. I'm going to change my mind. I, Because that's my choice. And I'm going to come under what God says. And you'll find that we're fighting to be together. And you'll find that strength is renewed. And you'll find that there's a togetherness. And you'll find that the heavy things in life that you couldn't lift on your own are lifted. And you'll find that what God's called the church to be, it becomes. And the glory of the house, it will be greater than the former. The latter will be greater than the former. And the reins and the things that you've desired to see in your heart. And the moves of God you've desired to see in your heart. And you've heard a promise. And you've been partnered with Him. But, but, but that which is the love or that which causes faith to work just has been a little bit out of place. So we're going to fight to be together in this house. By what? By walking in love. By walking in love. Let's walk in love. Hey guys, let's just walk in love. I mean, I could have just came in the night and just say, hey guys, you know what we need to do? We just need to walk in love. But you know what I thought you needed to see and what we needed to see? We needed to hear... A, a, a harder, a harder word, a word that maybe caused you to just get a little uncomfortable. Hear something a little different, because this is how I heard it. And 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 those teeth, this, that thought that's been gnawing on you. I want you to see that picture. I wish you could put it back up, just so you could see. And I, and it's just Satan, you know. Just I don't need you to put it back up, but just I just want you to see in your no. Not in my house. Not in this house. And so if you see if you see somebody, listen, if you hear of something, if you hear, if you hear of your, your brother or your sister offended, you know what? It came to you. Now you're involved. So you know what that means? You're going to have to operate by the biblical way out, which is go to them. It came to you? All right, Johnny. Come on. Let's go see Peter and deal with it. I'm not a babysitter. Hopefully, husbands, you do this to your wives. Wives, you do this to your husbands. Friends, do this to your friend. Yeah, but I don't want them to be mad at me and be hurt. Well, the wounds from a friend, the Bible says, are a precious thing. Because very few friends will tell you that you have a booger in your nose or that you're acting the fool. Just love one another. Amen? Yeah. Amen. God bless you. We will see you Sunday. Hey, one more one announcement before you go. Um, we're going to announce again Sunday. Awaken will be begin to be closed, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after at 9 o'clock or after huddle. We will no longer offer Awaken Coffee to our Sunday, regular Sunday morning service, simply because of the overtaxing lines and the atmosphere and the culture that it's beginning to create, which is hurry up and wait isolation, waiting in line, um, 
frustrations, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do, and then also to combat culture uh, right now where there is, in a sense, a, restrict, a restriction going on in culture because of inflation and so on and so forth. Maybe you've noticed costs going up on this and this, and you may be thinking a little bit more about what something costs. We want to we wanna change that, and we want to be generous in our approach. Uh, in providing and being hospitable in this house. I believe that's how God would want it. And so when people come and when we're together, the Awaken will be open for our early team that comes here, you know, to get ready. They're here early if they want to come get a coffee. But we're going to have, you know, refreshments and coffee. And just all, you just, we're going to just be, we're going to just crank it up a notch and, and change it around a little bit. Also, even how we do our B team breakfast or our serve team rather breakfast, that's going to be shaken up a little bit to where it's not just so much for our, our serve team in the mornings. And we're going to run this through for a full month. We're going to finish the month of November with our serve team breakfast. But, um, but again, it's going to just kind of change where we're all together and uh, there's a meeting place and a gathering place. And you can look across the table into somebody's eyes and you can encounter them and what's in you might, you know, might, need, to, might, to, might need to be for them that day. But maybe you'll be those eyes that somebody else needs to see that day and what's in them might refresh you. You know, so anyway, we're just fighting for that. We're fighting to be together again. Just what we've been praying into for a while. Like, what is it? What is it? What is it? We don't, we burn better together. So let's fight to be together. As you see the day approaching, gather all the more. He wouldn't bring that command. Get together all the more if there wasn't going to be war against it. Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great week. And we'll see you Sunday.